tonight. That's so sick. Guides Eyes is our personal search to find the very best fishing guides. And from their perspective, through that guide's eyes, we'll find some of the most epic and historic fisheries throughout the Americas. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thirty-nine, forty-degree water. That is cold, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look as cold as it is, but that is brutal, man. That's yeah. like ice water. It is. It it's is. just about freezing. I was invited to come fishing with one of the best guides in the Branson area, Eric Oliverson. And this guy, he's a tournament fisherman, he's a local guide, and, and really he has a reputation in this area of being a guy that just flat catches them wherever he goes. Come on, I'm snagged on the ice right now, I can't get through it. This we need is an icebreaker. insane. Bad weather scenario, these yeah, nasty fronts, so and most importantly, water temperature is plummeting lower than anybody in these areas have seen. Ice forming in the back of these creeks, places that you want to fish being inaccessible because of because of their frozen over in places where they shouldn't be like that. Those are the frustrations of, of a guide's life in the worst weather you can imagine. I have never seen this on Table Rock in my life. Come on, look at that. Not in this area of the lake. You came back here to fish the back of this creek and it's uh, it's frozen over. Table Look rock right now. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting table rock to be this time of year. You know, typically this is one of those times that it's a shoe in, you know, February. This is one of my favorite times to fish. Um, you catch a lot of fish, you catch a lot of giant fish. Some of our biggest fish on table rock are being caught usually in this month. 100, 120 plus bass days in April last year. And, and I mean, half of them keepers. Really? A lot of times it's a morning bite, then there's a little lull, and then it's a real strong afternoon bite. Yeah. A guide's life isn't always easy. You know, you think we go to these great places, great times, and this was a great place. And it would have been a great time if we wouldn't have had these just nasty fronts knocking the water down to where the backs of creeks are frozen things that the locals have never seen where lakes around here are freezing completely over and Eric's like, man, we gotta go somewhere the shad are not dying. A novel concept, throwing an Alabama rig on this lake. <laughs> I bet you've never seen this before. Imagine that, right? Imagine that. <laughs> this is what's exposed all the giants on, on all these great, wonderful lakes. That, it has, you know, has it kind of It's kind of taken all the uh, all the little uh, pet tricks that away, really. Well, typically in February, we think lots of fish and we think lots of big fish. I mean, it's not uncommon at all for folks who don't get a chance to fish very often to come out here and catch a fish of a lifetime. So my game plan really going into this was to key in on those deep trees, like we always do every year, uh, to key in on brush piles, fish in deep structure, where you think of lots of fish being ganged up and a lot of different sizes. Basically, I'm keeping a boat uh, anywhere from 60 to, to 80 foot. I mean, pretty much all day, that's where, that's where we're going to be. The boat's going to be in 60 to 80? 60 to 80, pretty much the whole day. And, and what we're going to be fishing today, Byron, is um, all these areas um, are basically just staging areas where, where these fish winter. And, uh, you know, they're deep cedar trees. There's still a lot of the, lot of the uh, limbs left on all these trees, and it's basically like a bass condo. And, uh, I mean, Typically when you catch one, there's about 20 more that live in these giant trees. So really? yeah, and it's funny because you'll so fish. So they're just a, stacked right now. Oh yeah, yeah. And you'll fish, you'll fish a whole row um, of trees. And um, it's funny because most of the population will live in just one giant tree. And you'll catch you, literally, you can catch 30 pounds off of one giant tree. No kidding? Yeah. Hey, look at that water temperature. It's all the way up to 43 oh, degrees. Oh, man, it's man. We, we may see 44 today. You know, looking, graphing at these fish, seeing them down there, that was the most frustrating part of the whole deal is not only finding the bait, but seeing the fish literally on those Lorance units, watching those fish streaking. I know for a fact that our baits were within a foot of a lot of these basses' uh, mouths, and, and you couldn't do nothing to, to turn that light switch on. Come on, something happened.
There's one. You got one? Yeah. Look at there. Is it a big one? That feels like a decent one. I'm gonna fire in behind you. See, there's a school of them. Yeah. Woo! Not a little large mouth. He just felt good. Let's see, there's a stack of them over there. Pretty proud of that one. Yeah, you better be proud of that one. <laughs> this time of year, these fish are really feeding heavily on shad. Uh, and they're feeding very deep. Most of the fish that we catch are anywhere from 25 to all the way down to 70 feet deep. And this is really the most consistent oh, bite on our one. lakes. You got another one? Yeah. That's a better one. Dude. Oh, well, you fired that school up. You got that school fired up all right. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. <laughs> Not as big as I thought. He's a nice little fat spot. Dude. <laughs> God, look how fat they are. <laughs> Look at them suckers are down there eating that shad. They are chewing. What a beautiful fish, man. Got this it. time of year, they just get like footballs, man. They're wider than they are long. Look at him. Yeah, he is a little studly fat thing. How fat he is. Fat. Thick. And that's probably barely just a 15-inch keeper. And but just a stud. Weigh two and a half pounds, probably. <laughs> Catch another one. Good, you got a little school going right up there, huh? Yeah. Uh, get another one. That's two off this spot. You don't realize that connection he has to his family until you go to his house and you see those four girls and, and his beautiful wife running around, you know, just embracing what he does. Did you steal one of my swim baits? Yeah. yeah. You want to be good or you want to be great? Randy Howell's classic win turned on a game time decision. And I just got the overwhelming urge to turn around. And his decision to tie on his Livingston crankbait. I caught a lot of fish on that bait. He choked, it. He choked the Livingston, baby. Look at that. The Howler Dream Master Classic helped Randy climb from 11th to 1st on the final day to win the most coveted trophy in fishing. The Howler Dream Master Classic from Livingston Lures. Order it now at Bass Pro Shops. I'm Dr. Doug Jordan. I've been a practicing optometrist and an outdoorsman for over 20 years now, and I'm very excited to bring you the new line of Vicious Vision Sunwear powered by Xperio UV. These glasses deliver a 20% increase in contrast sensitivity, up to three times more scratch resistance, and double the UV protection of competitive eyewear. They simply allow anglers to see more in the water than ever before. Check them out or locate retailers at viciousvision.com. Get vicious. Guide Ties is brought to you by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. Livingston Lures, the difference is clear. And by Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. I love fishing out here on days like this. Am I in the right spot? Yeah, yeah. Want to see me get snagged? This Vicious Vision subsurface moment is all about a family guy first and a fisherman second. Eric is, is ingrained in the fabric of guiding. He's a, a, a kid that was inspired to guide before he was 10 years old by, by a guy who's a legend on the White River, Bill Alverson. So it's really neat to see Eric talk about his grandfather, a guy that really took his passion and love for fishing and, and embedded it in his grandson, Eric. After a long day out on the water, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild, especially like when I get cranking. It's a busy time. I'm running two to three trips every day, and a lot of times, you know, my mornings start 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and this is the part of really guiding that most people don't see is, is the work after you get home. I mean, we're out there all day, and you can't really answer phone calls, or if I do, it's real quick. And, so the end of the day is catching up on emails, returning phone calls, uh, gearing up for 
the next day, <laughs> like we we're throwing an Alabama rig today. So now I've got to rig up four or five of these at least for tomorrow, and it's very time consuming. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have my kids come out in the garage and just hang out with me. That way I get some time with them. Because uh, when guide season starts, it's, you know, I don't see a whole lot of my family other than in the evening time. So uh, I really, you know, we, that's why we got kids' toys and, and stuff out in the garage because it becomes a playhouse. It's my playhouse and my kids' playhouse, too. Did you steal one of my swim baits? Yeah. Okay, now I feel good again. There's one. Come on! Go back to your one shot. Another one? Another one. <laughs> Fish on. Other side. Bring around the other side. Bring them around. Bring them around. Let them dance in that sunset. <laughs> that... <laughs> Another chunk of a spot right there. Spotty chunks. Oh, they're healthy, aren't they? They are. They got plenty to eat. That's what that place is known for, man. Giant spots. Studleys, they're just fat. Oh! Hit the rock again? You know, I, just free I, swimming. I did not, it was free swimming. I kind of out there, it felt like it was in about 35, 40 foot. Just chilling out with the shad. Hey, what I'm doing, Byron, there's that, that shelf still out here. And once it's hitting that bottom, I'm just kind of just strolling it through there and that's when they've been popping it. So you're letting it sit on the bottom? Just as soon as it kind of hits hits the bottom, yeah. I'm letting it, I, I just ease it up real slow and just kind of, just letting it hang out right there. Hang out right there. There's one. Under the boat? Under the boat. Come on! <laughs> You're killing me! Ow! <laughs> Jeez, I'm right here! Spot. Little guy. Dude, they're biting! Look how fat they are! That one choked it pretty good. That one was under the boat, dude. <laughs> he was. He was straight up underneath the boat. Dude, they're out here in 100 foot of water. He's under the boat. I know, isn't that crazy? Little Kytex. I'm starting, to, I'm starting to envy your little swim baits. Yeah. They work okay. They work okay. <laughs> and we finally started getting bit. I should say he finally started getting bit in the evening. Somehow he's actually getting lucky enough to get these fish to still clobber his bait in the middle of a, a complete shad gorging from this very unusual shad die-off that we're, that we're experiencing with this freezing cold water on, on Table Rock. But in looking at the weather, it's gonna be on tomorrow. It's gonna be the day to get back out there and we are gonna wreck them early. Day two, crack of dawn, let's go blast them. Look at this, this is better. This is a lot better. It feels like we got the lake to ourselves today. Dude, I'm telling you, this is, this is what Table Rock's all about right here. You get these kind of conditions and ha we're, we're gonna have it all to ourselves today. Yeah. Try to try to pull some of these biggins out of here. Cool. Looking forward to it. Let's go. Scott Martin here at PowerPole Headquarters, where every shallow water anchor comes with drive-off protection. What's up, Z? Oh, hey, Scott. How have they perfected the science of drive-off protection? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> PowerPole, where drive-off protection comes standard, because it's easy to forget stuff when the fishing's good. Jose Wahebi always made time to make fishing dreams come true for kids facing incredible challenges. Yeah. Oh, man. 
That important work will continue into the future with your help when you contribute to the Jose Wehebe Spanish Fly Memorial Foundation. 100% of the proceeds go toward making fishing wishes come true. It's a big barracuda. <laughs> wow. Visit josewehebefoundation.org and see how you can help his great work continue. Eric Oliverson and I are on Table Rock Lake. Day two, it's gonna be on, and we are gonna wreck them early, crack a dawn, let's go blast them. And day two is gonna be a lot better than day one. Well, what are we doing? Let's go catch some fish, man. We're gonna just kinda of do the same thing. I think it's a morning bite, really, so we're just gonna continue and fish a lot of these, these same areas, got good deep drops, deep trees. We're gonna concentrate on throwing that Alabama rig and try to try to fool some of these big ones out of here. Cool, looking forward to it, let's go. All right. I'm all set. Hyperjacked on coffee and, <laughs> and a free lake, an empty lake. Condition seemed right. It was a little overcast, no wind. I thought this is going to be good. This is the morning where we're going to light them up. We are here. That was quick. That was not a big run. <laughs> so you're going to pick up where we left off last night. Yeah, yeah, might as well. These things are, uh, I I'm sure le yesterday afternoon, we just were on the tail end of things. But, we can uh, probably go on a lot of those places we went in the midday and call oh, them for in the sure. I, I think so. I think it's happening in the morning. Cool. There he is. Got him? Yep. Stay with him. I got him caught up now. <laughs> Come on, baby. He's coming right to me. Is that that same fish you hooked before? There he is. That's Look at nice that pretty spot. thing. God, they're so beautiful. Isn't that man. awesome in that clear water? God, are they eating, man. Look God, that. are they eating. <laughs> that is crazy what their belly's full of, Isn't man. Isn't that crazy, man? Look at the chunk on that thing. That thing is a healthy fish. God, they're, lo they're loving life. I can imagine with those just, what a beautiful, beautiful I mean, look fish. how thick they are. Look at his back. Yeah. It's wide. It's a football, man. So I'm not getting bit. I don't like throwing an Alabama rig, and I'm not probably the best person to throw it, but Eric is a different story. This guy, he's got a ton of confidence, and he's caught a lot of fish on this thing, and he's, he's, he's catching these fish. And the one thing we noticed immediately, these are not full-blown pre-spawn bellies full of roe fish. These fish are just blowed up with shad. Their bellies are full. Right on, dude. Nice. That's a different kind of ice being broken. Hey, boy, he thumped it. Did he? Oh, my gosh. That, was, thump, that was the yeah. bite you wanted right there. Maybe you fired him up, Biggie. But it was exactly the deal. Come out of a tree, I killed it, and that's when he just pounded it. So when I pop out one of those trees, just stop it dead? Yeah, just let it sink. Once you pull it out of there, just let it fall for a minute. We expected this to be just done by 11 o'clock. You know, the, the fish were going to bite early. We were going to catch them early. We found an area that Eric knew that they were at, that they actually would bite. And so uh, we're out there, and it's not really happening. And then it just gets flat, sunny, and calm. God, that is the good stuff. I came through some trees, dude. I, I'm oh. still stunned I didn't get bit. Like two casts ago, I popped through a couple trees, and then I stalled it. And I'm just waiting for it to pop, and it, nothing happened. I'm telling you, Byron, you know. You know how it is. I'm telling you, this is the freaking juice. Yeah, the way when you talked about this spot, I was like, I, I want to come back to it today. I really do. I was like, this this is such a inside key kind of thing, and all the trees, and I'm like, oh God, please. Eric Oliverson and I are grinding through some key areas where he just blisters quality fish. And, and, and yet he's shaking his head in this disgust, realizing the fishing is not what he had really hoped it was going to be. The water has gotten so cold that the shad are just, they're, they're not just floating up, they're just kind of suspended. And this is hard to feed these fish an artificial bait in the middle of clouds of suspended dying shad. I feel like I went through a school of shad or something right there, just kind of little you probably did, those little dying shad. Poor little things are out here frozen solid, fluttering to the surface, <laughs> getting picked off by seagulls. 
There's some down there, like 50 foot. Oh, you're seeing them? Yeah. Mm. Man, that looks good down there. They're moving. We went from overcast, no wind, to finally the sun pops out. We get a little wind for about 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> it would have been a great day to fly a kite, man. We had like 50 mile an hour winds. It just attacked us out of nowhere. There's one. <laughs> Woo! Bring that one in. Let me get the trolling motor. You run that. Bring that fish in. Oh, I thought he was a lot bigger than that. Another spot. Another fat In this body. glorious windy day. <laughs> As we grind away at him. Dude, grinding away. Unbelievable. And you want so badly to see this place show itself off for what it can be and what Eric can do here. And, and yet we're still trying to make this work. It's not anybody's fault. It's, it's that frustration of, of a guide's life in the worst weather you can imagine. <laughs> oh, look at that. You got him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. I can catch him. <laughs> there are two kinds of people who fish. Those who simply fish and those who fish like pros. To tell them apart, just look at their engines. Pros choose Mercury because nothing beats a Mercury Pro XS when it comes to hole shot, acceleration, top speed, and reliability. And no one beats a Mercury dealer when it comes to service and support. Mercury Pro XS, yeah. the top choice of pros for those who fish like a pro. It's good to have Mercury behind you. When is a bass boat not just another bass boat? When it's a Triton. That's when Triton bass boats are designed from the ground up for stability, safety, comfort, and fishability. All Triton bass boats are packed from bow to stern with exclusive features important to fishermen, whether you're a weekend angler or a touring professional. When you need a boat that's not just another bass boat, think Triton. Guide Ties is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Triton Boats, we take America fishing. And by Vicious Vision, get vicious. Look at the chunk on that thing. That thing is a healthy fish. At the end of day two, I couldn't help but feel let down, <laughs> a little frustrated to say the least. This is my home lake, my favorite time of year to fish, and the fish just aren't doing it. Dude, grinding away. <laughs> Unbelievable. Honey, why don't you tell them your claim to fame on the gummy worm? And I asked Eric, what, Mama. what do crappie like to bite? What is it that they're Mama. biting? He Mama. said it's the bright color. Well, I, we had been eating sour gummy worms all day, and I said I'm gonna, and I hadn't caught anything. Mama. And we and were all said, were having a ball. Everybody else was catching twenty some, and I had Mama. caught zero. So I said I'm gonna throw this sour gummy Mama. worm in. Mama. And Mama. No, it's not he so said it, 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 there's no way, no Mama. way they're gonna bite that. <laughs> so I hooked it up, threw it in, and within five seconds I'd caught one. Oh Lord, I never let it down, and then she caught another one. <laughs> it's funny. So day three, and Eric's like, man, we got to go somewhere in the shad are not dying, where there's not what we see here in the water. And I got an idea. You know, let's, let's put it on the trailer, and let's go over to Bull Shoals, and we'll go to the upper end of Bull Shoals where the river's at, and at least there we'll have a stable environment. You know, that, that's got to be the place. Incredible fishing, and normally you can get bit and catch several different species. We've got white bass, striper, crappie, uh, walleye, 
large mouth, small mouth, spotted bass, a whole bunch of everything, and there's a ton of them up there. Dude, you are changing up on me. Well, you're the change up guy. You love it. You're like what? Well, you're like a gypsy. You're a traveling gypsy <laughs> guide. We have to do what we have to do, man. You pull man. up the stakes and you say, let's <laughs> let's roll to another location. Well, you know, the beauty of it down here is we've got three incredible lakes, and they're always going to be biting somewhere, and uh, it was not happening over there. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll go from Table Rock, and you'll say, let's just, I got another little creek I want to go to. Right? Problem is, this guy got a trailer over to it. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? We're, all, we're always within a half hour of where we always put in. I feel for Eric because this is a oh, guy's yeah. life. This is what a guy that does this profession like he does. He's like, man, I've, I've been here before, and there's days where you hit home runs out of the park, and days where that ball is coming across the mound, and you could swing a million times, you'll never get a, a, a bat on it. And, and, and that's, that's the frustration that, that I saw is a guy that is such a good angler and, and such a confident angler who's got all the mechanics down, he knows exactly where he wants to put the boat, and the fish just don't cooperate. <laughs> hey, look at that, I can catch him. Even though it didn't happen this time on either lake, Table Rock or Wool Shoals, I, it's still my favorite place to fish. I can't wait because in three or four days after all this stuff blows over and the water temperature starts coming up a little bit, these shad start floating down the river, it's going to be an incredible fishery again. We just kind of landed on top of a little sore spot.